Hey Pine Scriptors, welcome back to another video. Today's video is going to be covering a recent update that the TradingView team made to the PineScript language. On the 25th of January, they changed how alerts work, or they added a new alert functionality to our scripts. So this new alert function works in both strategies and studies and it allows a fully dynamic message to be generated when the alert triggers. So when we get to the Pine Editor, I'll explain exactly what that means. But this is a pretty cool feature. The new alerts work using a similar model to the recent strategy alerts, where only one alert created in the chart user interface can aggregate all the triggers generated by any number of alert called blah, 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 blah. Basically what this means is that in strategy scripts, you can only trigger one alert. If you set an alert on a strategy script, any of those order management function calls will trigger an alert if you've set one on that strategy script. And the alert condition function does not work on strategy scripts, which just means you don't have as much control over alerts in a strategy script as you do in a study script. But that's changed now with this new alert functionality. Basically, instead of using the alert condition function, we can now use this just alert function. You can use it as many times in your script as you want. And whenever one of these trigger, if you've set an alert on the TradingView platform referencing these alert function calls, uh, then that will trigger an alert. And I'm gonna go to the Pine Editor and show you exactly what that means in a second, but let's finish reading this. So to create these new alerts, you can include as many alert calls in your script as you wish, enclosing each one in an if block defining the triggering conditions. So in an alert condition function, you normally have to pass your Boolean value or your alert trigger condition into that function. With these new alert calls, you can use if statements to trigger them. So normally an alert condition function cannot be anywhere except for the global scope, meaning you can't have it in a for loop or an in, in an if statement. Well, these alert condition calls uh, behave differently. The only thing that hasn't changed is how you actually set the alert. So you use the create alert dialog box and you select the alert type called alert function call. So that means when you're creating strategy scripts, you can uh, create alerts that trigger only on an alert event or on order fill events or on both. So that's not something I want to cover in today's video because it's a bit uh, complex and advanced or require a fair bit of time to get into that. That's something I'd cover in the PineScript Mendelship program. If you want to learn more about that, head to pinescriptmastery.com. But stick around because I'm going to jump into the Pine Editor in a second and show you the uh, basic rundown of this new alert functionality. The final really cool thing about this new alert function is that uh, you can input dynamic alert messages so that you don't need to use placeholders anymore. As long as your message is in string format, you can pretty much pass any data you want to these new alert functions. So before we jump into the Pine Editor, here is the documentation, the official technical write-up for this alert function. You can find this information on the PineScript reference uh, manual, or you can just hold control and click on the alert function in your Pine Editor, and this will pop up. So here's a script example of how to use this new alert function. I'm just going to copy and paste this in the Pine Editor and modify it slightly, and we're going to go over uh, this new alert function here. But the main differences are this alert function does not take a title, it only takes a message and a frequency parameter, and we'll go over those in the Pine Editor. Uh, the final thing to go over before we go there is these remarks. So contrary to alert condition, alert calls do not count as an additional plot. This is only relevant to people who use third party APIs and reference their plots in their alert condition messages. If you don't know what that means, don't worry, it's not important to you. Uh, function calls can be located in both global and local scopes. So this is a big change. Normally the alert condition function can only exist in your overall script. It cannot exist in a function or an if statement or a for loop or anything like that. Basically, that means it just can't be tabbed or indented. These function calls do not display anything on the chart and the frequency argument or parameter only affects the triggering frequency of the function call where it is used. So you can have different frequencies on different alert function calls in your script. So that's the technical jargon out of the way. Let's get into the Pine Editor and show a practical example of this info. So here I am in the Pine Editor. I've copy and pasted the TradingView's official PineScript reference code into my editor and I've changed a couple things. All I've done is add another cross under variable so that I can show you a couple of variations of this alert function. So everything in the top half of the script is business as usual. Nothing is different about it. 
We're still using the study annotation function. We're still declaring our alert conditions as you normally would. The only difference is right here. So if I scroll to the bottom of my script, and let me make some more space here. This is how you would normally do what these two functions are doing. You'd write an alert condition in the global scope. So that means there's no tab. You can see that these are tabbed underneath this if statement. The alert condition function cannot be placed here. If I were to copy this and paste it here and save the script, we'll get an alert, uh, an error, sorry, an alert. We'll get an error. Cannot use alert condition in local scope. So that's what that means. If I save the script, it will now compile without any errors because you are allowed to put these new alert function calls within a local scope. And that's what these if statements are. So basically, if you wanted to do what these alert function calls are doing in this script before they added this feature, you would need to set your alerts up like this. You need to use an alert condition function call and you need to pass your two alert variables or alert condition variables into the alert condition function itself. You would then need to title the alert condition and your message needs to be static, which means um, it's a constant. So it doesn't change um, based on whatever's happening on your price chart. The only exception for this is using the placeholders. So see how these two alert functions, they pass in the closing price and the moving average price of the current bar that triggered the alert. You need to convert that data into a string before, uh, to make this work. If I get rid of two string here, and save the script, we'll get a compile error because you cannot pass an integer or a float or any other data value except for a string into this alert message parameter. If we were to try to do the same thing here, if I were to add that on to the end of our alert condition message and save the script, we'll get an error as well. Reason for that is the alert condition function requires a static or constant string, const string, which means you can't use function calls within your message parameter because that's no longer static. Whatever this function does will be different depending on uh, which bar triggers the alert. So we, need, we can't use that on here. If you wanted to do that same thing, if you wanted to add the closing price to your alert condition message, you would need to plot the closing price on your chart like this. This would count as plot number zero. And then you would need to change this to say plot underscore zero in two curly brackets. So this would achieve the same thing as this, but obviously it's a little more convoluted. You've got to add another plot to your chart, which will draw onto your chart. Uh, and so these new alert functions make it so that that is no longer necessary. So let's go over how they actually work. So these alert functions trigger the actual alert. So it doesn't matter what you put in here. Uh, if this alert function is called or triggered, an alert will be generated if you've set one up here, which we'll go over in a second. So if you were to move this, into the global scope and save the script. Now, if I was to set an alert on this script using this any alert function call condition, then the script will just generate random alerts for no reason because it's not taking into consideration our Boolean variable. So by putting this alert function within the scope of this if statement, what that's doing is it's telling PineScript, the uh, PineScript engine, not to trigger this alert unless X up is true. And X up is only true if the current closing price has crossed over the moving average on our chart, which is just a simple moving average. So this condition could be anything. Um, this is just an example to show you how this actually works. So if the closing price uh, plots a green arrow like you see here, that means that the closing price of the current bar crossed up and over the moving average. When that happens, an alert will be generated if you've set one in the alert uh, dialog. It will include the current closing price in that message. It will include the current moving average price in that message, and it will trigger once per bar, even if the current bar hasn't closed yet. Our X down, our cross down Boolean variable here behaves a little bit differently with this alert. So we're doing exactly the same thing. We're passing our closing price and our moving average price into this alert message. The only difference is this alert frequency is set to once per bar close. So the current bar must be confirmed. It must close above the SMA before this alert would be triggered. And if you wanna see what um, options you have here, if you just press control space after writing alert and a full stop, it will list all of the alert frequency options. There are only really two, or you can combine the two. So you can either trigger it once per real time bar, so a bar that hasn't closed yet, or once per a confirmed bar close. Otherwise you can just set it to frequency underscore all, 
which I believe is pretty much the same thing as setting it to frequency once per bar. So that's basically it for these new alert functions. Um, it's not particularly complex, it's just a little bit different to how we're used to working with alerts, and it's quite a cool feature. Uh, before we finish the video, I should show you how to set these alerts. Uh, you come up to your alert, create alert dialog window, click on that or press the hotkey alt plus A, or I think it's command A on a Mac, and you need to come up to your condition box, select alert example, or your script name. In my case, this is my script name, so I click on that, and then you have your alert conditions here. This is a script, this is the condition. If I click on this drop down box, we now have two alert options here other than all the built in ones. And that is any alert function call, which are these guys here, or we can select our alert condition function call. So if I click on that, now this alert will behave as traditional alerts do. But if I select this option, any alert function call, and I create an alert, now an alert will be triggered if any of these alert functions are called. So that's it for today's lesson. I'll leave a link in the video description to the reference manual and the blog post about this new feature. It's probably a good idea for you to go over into the Pine Editor and play around with it yourself to get familiar with it. Um, I'm not going to show you how to use it in a strategy function because it's exactly the same. It behaves exactly the same way in a strategy. So you can pass any information to your strategy alerts now using this alert new alert function call, which is pretty cool. There are a lot of use cases for that, particularly with automating trading uh, through a third party. So that's it for today's lesson. I hope you found that interesting and valuable. If you did, please hit the like and subscribe button. I'll be back soon with plenty more free content. And if you want to learn more advanced concepts with PineScript, or you want to dive into this new alert function in greater detail, head over to pinescriptmastery.com and check out my courses there. There's a free course there on the basics of PineScript. If all of this was a bit too advanced for you, then you might want to check that free course out because it goes into great detail about the foundational concepts of PineScript and it's helped many beginner traders get a grasp on this language. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Good luck with your trading guys and girls. Take care. Be good. Speak soon.